Earlier this week, I got a comment on one of my other videos and somebody asked, is the CT125 okay for tall people to ride? And I'm really glad that somebody asked that because when I bought this, I had not sat on one. I had not ridden one in person. Uh, I had only seen the promo videos. So I was really worried that it was going to be too small for me. I'm six foot two, I have a 34 inch inseam. I wear a size 12 boot, I'm like 170 pounds. And I was really concerned that coming from a 2002 V-Strom 1000 down to the CT125 was going to be like a circus clown riding one of the little tricycles. Uh, it's not like that. <laughs> I wanna get that out of the way up top. It's not like that at all. Um, the CT125 is totally suitable for tall people, but there's a lot of things to keep in mind and a lot of things that you're going to want to customize uh, right from the get-go. So let's jump into that. I wanna show you first how I look on the motorcycle and then we'll dive into some of those other things. So like I said, I'm six foot two and I wear a size 12. So when I come over to the bike, it's pretty easy for me to throw a leg over it here. Obviously it's a step through, uh, but when I sit down on the saddle, my feet are flat footed on the ground. I don't know if that's the same for folks that are a little shorter, but when I'm sitting, I'm sitting upright almost at a 90 degree angle and my legs are probably at about like a 50 or 60 degree angle. Uh, when the bike is actually on the ground, you can see the angle is not so extreme. Um, and you can see my feet on the pegs there. My knees are not that far away from the handlebar, but we'll talk more about that in just a second. Uh, but overall, the position is not terrible for somebody that's tall. When I first got the bike, I felt a little bit cramped. My arms were not fully extended and my knees touched the handlebars just a little bit. Um, but now uh, I have it flipped, which I'll show you in a sec. So the only time I ever touch is if I turn the bars at a real sharp angle like that. Um, I don't think I'll be doing that on the trail at all. Um, not the trail of the bike, but the actual trail. Um, maybe in a parking lot, now, I would say that if you're taller than I am, that's something to consider. Um, but I really don't think that it's an issue as they're rubber mounted anyway. And so they have a little bit of give and it's not really that big an issue. So this is the handlebar mount I was talking about. And this was a really easy thing to do, actually. Um, and it gave me about a half inch to one inch more room in the cockpit, which is really cool. My arms have plenty of space now and feel extended and my knees don't contact the handlebar edges anymore. Um, and it was super easy to do. Basically, there's two bolts down bottom, these big guys, which you just loosen while you remove the top plate and the top four bolts, pick up the handlebars, spin those guys around, put it all back together, and just make sure that you torque those down because it's super important to your safety. So I've read a lot about people having trouble with the bar that's directly behind the saddle. I have the Harbor Freight box mounted there, so it's not really an issue for me. But I think on a long off-road trip, what I would probably do is mount a piece of foam over top of it. Some people cut it off, but I don't think that's very wise for resale. And you can see that if I just scoot forward a little bit, it's not really an issue, although the extra space would be nice. So this is actually my biggest complaint about the motorcycle. When I got this bike from the dealer, the kickstart was actually about three to five notches further towards my foot um, or towards the peg. And I actually turned it back within the first two or three days of owning a motorcycle because it really impedes from getting good contact on the peg itself if you have bigger feet like I do. Um, reaching the brake is no problem. In fact, uh, no matter where you are, if you're you know, there or you're standing, like I'm doing right now, it's rather easy to touch the brake. Um, but you don't get very good grip on the peg because of the way that the kickstart juts out and the way that it is pointed towards you uh, really just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and it really does come out quite far. Uh, from this angle, you can see it a little bit better here. It really juts out a long way. There might be a way or a kickstart off a different model that might be a little bit smaller and doesn't take up so much space or impedes your uh, you know, grip on the peg itself. But I have yet to figure that one out. And like I said, it is an actual complaint of mine. 
and I tried to get every angle here so there's going to be one more right here that you can see just to see how difficult it really is to get back on those pegs so that does definitely get in the way and I'm not really sure why Honda did that hopefully that's something they improve in the future but if you have a good suggestion for that drop me a comment below so this complaint is embarrassing because the heel toe shifter is what makes the trail and super cub such nice homages to their forebears but for me the heel shifter is essentially useless I can get over top of the front shifter and I can get underneath it really super easy but the heel shifter for me is essentially useless because of my height uh, the angle my leg is at just prevents me from using it effectively and honestly safely um, I can if I really try but I almost have to lift my leg and butt off of the saddle to actually press the lever down I think that if I was shorter it might not be an issue or honestly if I was wearing boots like actual big off-road boots but I haven't done that yet and so I'm not really sure I'm not sure what the definitive answer is but I know a lot of guys and gals end up cutting that heel shifter off just because it gets in the way when you are standing. So in conclusion, can a tall person ride the Honda Trail CT125? Yes, a tall person can absolutely ride the CT125. The only thing stopping you is not managing your expectations. If you buy a Honda Trail and you expect it to fit somebody that's over six foot two, you know, perfectly from the get-go. You're just out of your mind. That's not going to be the case. But no bike is going to be perfect for you directly from the factory. There's always going to be things that you're going to want to customize and make your own. And that is what is so fun about owning bikes like these, is that they're totally customizable. There's so many cool accessories and so many things that you can do to make it your own. So find one, ride it, see what you think. If you're taller than I am, please drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about riding the Honda Trail and if it's even feasible for you. And if it's not, let me know what you're riding instead. Make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you follow me on here and on uh, Instagram. There'll be more cool videos coming soon.